I want to welcome our panelists and our uh, keynote speaker and our moderator. Uh, it's my honor to introduce Michael Zakaria. Uh, he's an executive coach and consultant to top executives in Fortune 100 companies, as well as prominent privately held companies. He's also the co-director of the Patches Project on Faith-Based Diplomacy and adjunct professor of law at the Strauss Institute of Dispute Resolution at Pepperdine University School of Law where he teaches cross-cultural negotiations and dispute resolutions. Uh, through his Patches program, he travels to the Middle East uh, continuously and meets with different faith groups. And recently, him and his partner have met with um, uh, brother, Islamic bro Brotherhood. And they're working closely with the leadership to be able to reconcile their differences with us. Uh, through that work, he has won the 2011 Peacemaker Award for Association of uh, Conflict Re uh, Resolution. Michael, and his, prior to his current position, served as, for 12 years as executive president of business development and general counsel for secret, uh, and secretary of DFS, the world's largest luxury travel retail company. In 1981, <coughs> excuse me, Michael was selected by the presidential commission to serve as one of 14 White House fellows and placed as special assistant to secretary of state. In 1988, he was appointed by President Reagan and confirmed by the Senate as Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Export Administration. He also served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for International Trade Co Controls, where he was responsible for heading the US delegation in international negotiations. On a personal note, I've known Michael for a year and a half. Uh, he coaches my partners and I on our team. Uh, he's a great coach. He's been able to lead our team and improve our communications among each other, makes the company a lot more efficient, uh, bring accountability to our group, and has done a great job. He has an interesting background as well. His dad is a Palestinian, um, and his mom is an Israeli Jew. So he has two sets of families, one living in Palestine, one sitting, living sitting in Israel. And uh, he just brings a lot of knowledge and depth to whatever he does, and it's an honor to have you uh, uh, moderate this event for us, Michael. Uh, thank you, Fareed, for that uh, overly generous introduction. Um, I have to say it was a nice try, but there's still no reduction in your coaching fees. Um, it's great to be here with you tonight. Uh, this is a very important topic uh, in a very important venue. What a great venue for a discussion of this topic. Uh, I want to thank initially Fareed and Michael and Sandy uh, for putting together the keynote speaker and this panel. Uh, it's a great panel. And this subject of religious radicals and extremism uh, and how to deal with it and what it is, is something that we all think about. And tonight is a time where we're going to learn a lot more about it. Um, it's a topic in which we can have and probably individually do have very strong opinions. Um, let me speak to the issue of strong opinions for a minute, uh, trying to help set the stage for tonight's discussion. Um, the title of tonight's talk, which is really terrific, is Face Your Fears, and the second part is Understanding religious radicals, extremism, and the global instability they cause. The two words I want to focus on for just a moment are face your fears, uh, that phrase being an understanding of ourselves. And I'm so thankful for this Museum of Tolerance, especially the beginning part that you all went through. I take my class here every time. I teach it. And there are those two doors, right? the red door and the green door, the prejudiced and the unprejudiced, all right? And we all, if we're being honest, think we ought to be walking through the green door, okay? The truth of the matter is we all walk through the red door, and that is because we all have inherent prejudices. One of the values of an evening tonight, if you will allow it to give you that value, is to help each of us to kind of flesh out 
those prejudices that we have of whatever variety and to just have a chance to examine them. Um, the second part of this title is understanding. And in understanding, to understand better what's going on tonight, instead of having only a message delivery conversation, which involves very little learning and understanding, let's try and focus tonight on having a learning conversation. And what that involves is a lot of listening, a lot of putting our own very strongly held views kind of on the side, not discarding them, but put them on the side for a moment and allow some new thoughts to kind of filter in and, and affect us. And I'm hoping that tonight is not just a learning conversation for the brain, but also for the heart. Um, it's unavoidable in discussion like we're gonna have tonight that there are gonna be provocative and controversial things said. Um, and that's, in fact, what the organizers want to have happen. And in fact, I've got a number of highly incendiary questions that I will toss in if none of you come up with them yourself. So there's no effort to try and have this be politically correct or kind of on the straight and narrow as far as avoiding controversy, just the opposite. And in order to have a conversation like that, critical to that is respect. I mean, I stand up here, if you can picture me as Aretha Franklin, I'd sing it and spell it for you, but it's R-A-S-P-E-C-T, and there needs to be a lot of respect tonight in order to allow an evening like tonight to work uh, well and, and, and well for all of you. Um, I'm, part of my role is to just kind of guide you through what we're gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be first introducing our, our wonderful uh, uh, keynote speaker, Masab, in just a couple minutes. Um, and then I'm going to be introducing each of our panel members who, by the way, um, have set aside this uh, evening for you. Uh, they are terrific men, men of deep faith and conviction in their respective faith traditions. Uh, they are not men that uh, paper over the differences between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, and at the same time, they work very closely and carefully and strategically to be able to have these three faith communities live not just in coexistence, but in fruitful, productive, and engaged coexistence. So these are remarkable men up here who are dedicated to their own faith tradition and to living in that fashion with those of other faith traditions.